Welcome to the 10 West building of the University of Bath, home to the psychology department and the Fastball lab. My name is George Stoller and I'm a lecturer here in cognitive neuroscience. In my lab, we focus on the development of new diagnosis tools for dementia using the latest EEG technology. Dementia affects almost a million people in the UK alone, with numbers forecast to rise considerably as our population ages. It causes a person to gradually lose their mental and physical abilities and they'll eventually require full-time care. It can be very distressing for sufferers, carers and family members and places considerable economic and healthcare pressure on society. Currently, a person is diagnosed with dementia using a combination of techniques, including brain imaging and pen and paper tests of their memory and other cognitive functions. The problem is that by the time a person is diagnosed, they may have already had some form of dementia for up to 20 years. The tests we have are simply not sensitive to these early stages of the disease. In the study that I'm going to talk about today, published in this issue of Brain, we tested a new tool called Fastball, which we have developed here at the University of Bath, for the measurement of cognitive impairment in the most common form of dementia, Alzheimer's disease. This new tool uses electroencephalography, or EEG, to provide a passive and objective measure of memory function in just minutes. Fastball uses a technique known as fast periodic visual stimulation, to elicit two discrete frequency responses in the EEG. The first, at the image presentation frequency, reflects the brain's visual processing and attention. The second, slower response, mirrors the presentation frequency of the previously seen images and reflects recognition memory. We quantify a memory response by calculating the power in the EEG spectrum at this slower frequency. We recruited 20 Alzheimer's disease patients 20 healthy older adult and 20 healthy younger adult control participants. Participants completed three conditions designed to measure their recognition memory. In the recognition condition, they viewed eight images which they named out loud and then made a simple discrimination choice against a foil image. They then viewed the fastball simulation block which lasted for three minutes. During this block, the eight images that they had previously viewed repeatedly appeared at regular intervals amongst novel, previously unseen images. Participants also completed two further conditions, an active control condition in which images were not previously viewed but were repeatedly presented at regular intervals, which helped to quantify the role of online learning during the fastball block, and a control condition in which participants viewed a constant stream of novel images. In order to compare our passive task with explicit recognition, participants also completed a short behavioural recognition task after the fastball block, in which they were asked to identify the oddball images compared to a foil in a two alternative force choice task. One of the most important aspects of this new technique is that for the fastball block, participants were not given any instruction or cued in any way to look out for previously seen images. They were simply asked to press a keyboard key when a central fixation cross turned red, which occurred randomly. Dementia patients often struggle to follow complex task instructions, making a passive, objective task potentially very valuable. Our results reveal that Alzheimer's disease patients showed significantly reduced responses to previously seen images, while there were no significant differences between younger and older healthy controls. This difference was present in both the recognition and active control conditions, while there were no differences between the groups in the control condition. This is the main finding of our study and demonstrates that fastball provides a novel marker of memory impairment in Alzheimer's disease. When performance on the post-fastball two alternative forced choice task was compared, there were marginal, non-significant differences between Alzheimer's patients and healthy controls, suggesting that the passive fastball measure of recognition memory was more sensitive than the explicit behavioural test. We were able to distinguish Alzheimer's disease patients from healthy older adult controls using just their fastball memory response score with an accuracy of 86%, that rose to 92% if a region of interest approach was used. Overall, our results show fastball provides an alternative way of testing recognition responses that holds promise as a functional marker of cognitive impairment in Alzheimer's disease. It is passive, non-invasive, quick to administer and uses cheap, scalable EEG technology and opens a new door in the development of early diagnosis tools for dementia. The success of this study relied on a great deal of help from clinicians who helped with patient recruitment 
and the participants who were so generous in volunteering their time.